I got to be able to create a groove out of whatever I'm, 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 I'm making a beat out of. And whether I'm making an original beat, whether I'm sampling, whatever it is, I got to be able to create a groove. If I can't, then it's like the record is useless to me. I got into producing because I ran out of other options, man. Like I went to Howard University, got kicked out of college, and um, ended up back in the Bronx, had a baby on the way, and I had no form of income. But I was a DJ back at Howard, so you know, I was familiar with music. And um, the rest is history, man. My partner at the time, my man Thriller, he had bought an MPC, an uh, older version of this, actually. He bought an MPC, and um, he went out of town. Let me hold it. I made two beats on it. He took it back, and I ran into a guy by the name of Todd Terry. Todd Terry had artists at the time. I played him some those two beats I had. He said, how much you want for the beats? I said, yo, um, I said, I made a joke. I said, yo, give me a stack for each beat. A thousand back then, nobody said a stack. I said, give me a thousand for each beat. He was like, I bet. Goes in the other room, goes in his safe, brings me back. Two thousand dollars gives me, he said, yo, I need more beats. I said, yo, I don't, I don't got no equipment. I just borrowed this from my man, I, you know, such and such. He said, where you live at? I tell him, long story short, three days later, he sends like $20,000 worth of equipment to my crib. My parents had reggae music. That's it. That's all I grew up listening to, whether it was Barris Hammond, whether it was Garnet Silk, whether it was um, Bob Marley, whoever it was, it was just reggae music. So I always wanted to find a reggae song that I could really flip into some hip hop. When I listened to that, I said, yo, how can I keep this feeling going for three and a half minutes, four minutes? That was my goal when I first heard that intro, and I didn't know how I was gonna do it. Everybody knows the original intro, which is this. So that's the, that's really the meat and potatoes of the sample. That is the sample. There's nothing else to the sample. That's the sample. So I have that piece and I have this piece. Those two pieces that I just played for you make up that whole beat. Track three, like I said, is where I started to layer like a groove. So I started regular hi-hats. Nothing crazy. Next track. A kick. Kick, snare, and a clap. So this is... That was the next sound I used was like a, a regular scratch. Again, this is 2002, you know what I'm saying? Nobody don't really use a scratch no more, but... Next track is just an open hi-hat. I was gonna throw this beat away, like this beat was never gonna exist because at this point, from what I'm up to now, what I just played you, I didn't understand, like it wasn't making sense to me. But I knew it was a dope sample to the point where it was supposed to sound fire, right? So when I did this last trigger, this is what brought the whole beat together, this one piece that I'm about to show you. Like right now the sample's still kinda all over the place until I did this with it. I can't believe how I, how I put that shit together. <laughs> it sounds crazy for a producer to say that that made the beat, but you gotta remember, this is 15 years ago. A lot of people can't even remember what they ate last week. This is 15 years ago, so to see this, it's crazy. At another event, I was asked to remake this track and I, on another machine without loading up the old disc, none of that, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't remember how I put that together because it was really like, that record was meant to be. That wasn't supposed to come out like that, but it did, and to me, it turned out to be and I sh maybe I shouldn't say it because it was me, but one of the greatest hip hop records in the last 15 years. So go up town to Harlem, tell them that I sent you. Yep. Tell them it's August, I'm going to November. Yeah. I need a couple birds, get a broad. 